and welcome back. Today I want to continue looking at the WD MyCloud series. More appropriately, I want to talk about the PR4100. Now, we have featured this unit on the channel before, and one of my biggest complaints about the device was the fact that its operating system, you know, the graphical user interface, the GUI, wasn't exactly awe-inspiring. It was fairly lackluster once you look at companies like Synology and QNAP. So what I thought I would do is I got a notification that the very latest version of this update is now available and they say they have improved it. So what I'm going to do is make my way into this WD MyCloud PR4100 that I've updated with the very latest firmware and we're going to see what has changed as well as upload and download a few files just to see if the device is still as nippy as we remember. So for those, the more astute of you, remember the login from the previous video, and I say the previous video, it was a fair old while ago. The password should be password in lower case, and there we are, we're inside the device. On the front here, we've got a uh, overall capacity, we've got 4TB uh, storage drive inside there, and of course, one user connected. This is the user interface of that software. Um, again. Not a lot of difference right now. I know they've added a few of these lovely buttons on the front that they didn't have last time. And there's a few options here with them being a lot clearer to access them. But for the most part, they're not readily accessible. Actually, before I continue, I'm going to connect a USB drive to this device. And we'll use that drive. I'm just moving to the other side of the room. We're going to connect that drive to see how this device reacts to that drive being connected. But nevertheless, as you can see, we've completely formatted the device so we can upload some files to it. And we've got a user account control. Now, again, I'm not going to go through all of the settings on this again. If you do want to see more information about setting up user groups and accounts and security and stuff, do check out my other video about the MyCloud OS overview. This is to look at what's improved and what's changed since that original OS. Straight away, what I will say is the options seem a little bit clearer this time around. As some of these you had to go into subsections in order to see a lot of these options. And from here, we've got all the different storage and share areas, and there's that USB drive that I've just connected. Inside here, we can set up different options, and we can, you know, just do stuff for backups and more. We will be talking about Apple Time Machine backups in a future video. Moving into the apps section, there should be some new apps. And again, the app user interface, I think, has improved as well. From here, I can see lots of information regarding um, lots of backup software. And Acronis is slowly but surely making its way across all of the platforms. Um, we've already got all the apps that we installed last time. And of course, Plex Media Server being a big one on there. Um, and again, this application, they've done the installation there. It's been the fresh installation of the device, you can see, 2019. And you can see on the bottom of the screen when this video was done, as well as configuring the details and the bits and bobs of this Plex Media Server application. I was always keen to point out that um, the PR4100 is a good Plex Media Server NAS, and I know updates between Plex, the app, and the WD haven't always gelled as well as they could have, but I will be doing a fresh look at Plex on this device in 2019, as well as all of those cloud backups as well. If we go into the cloud access section, this is where we set up previously the ability to access this device remotely as well as backup to and from it. And of course, the primary backup section that tells us more about uh, backing up either individually or whole system backups. And again, it doesn't rival things like Active Backup Suite for Synology, but it's still not too shabby. The storage manager here seems largely the same. I've got to say, there's not a huge amount of difference there. And again, we can do the usual checks. At the moment, WD doesn't support the um, Seagate iWolf health management that a lot of the other brands do. But I do think that's something we might see soon. But of course, because this is a WD NAS, there may be a conflict there between the two companies and that they're not going to proceed with it. But we can do the usual smart tests that can be um, either automatic or manual. Not a lot of difference in terms of the settings here. Uh, it looks very, very familiar indeed to when I first set up uh, this device a wee while ago. And with regards to accessing data and setting up storage arrays, how about we have a go at that now? So how about we create a new folder? We'll call this folder test2019. And we'll create that now. And of course, should have realized, can't have any spaces. So we've created test 2019, there we go. We can make it public. 
We can make it private if we so wish and then choose who we want to access it, give it a recycle bin. Um, all of these, remember, this folder is now going to be accessible over the network and, of course, the Internet. And from here, we can then move forward into that storage and then start playing with some of our files. But again, it still doesn't feel hugely um, you know, user-friendly to me. I've always felt that the way they went about storage and file access was nowhere near as chewable and user-friendly as people need these days. And I, I think accessing storage could be a great deal better than it is on this device. I mean, don't get me wrong, we, you can create as many user groups as you want, and creating those areas of storage is indeed very easy, and the number of users that can access that storage is very easy. But if we want to manage these shared folders, in a much more direct fashion in ways such as just literally uploading downloading files it's not as easy as it should be it should not take this long to be able to access these files now of course if we set up a network drive that's a different story but it's still not great and that the file access that you have just feels basic and i'm sorry to say that wd but that's just the way it is um, if you do want basic storage, this will probably do the job for you. But right now, even with this latest version of the software, and I think we can go here to look at the very latest version we're running on, and this is, double check, but I don't believe there's any version. This last updated uh, on the 3rd of January. For me, I'm not seeing a vast improvement to what there was. It certainly has lots of options and stuff I can look at, but apart from that, it still doesn't feel as intuitive and user-friendly as it should be. Hopefully we'll see more from WD this year in terms of their NAS storage. I still like this device, and in terms of those apps and running individual applications, it's still a great device. But for me, it just it loses something in translation when you're running it from a standard desktop interface and want to use this device in a friendly, usable fashion. We will be looking at Plex next on the next video. I hope you've enjoyed it, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to support this channel so I can keep you guys in the know. And of course, thank you so much for watching.